let's explore an alternative way of performing off-chain payments. It's called commit chains. Commit chains operate on smart contract enabled blockchains. So as far as I know, there is currently no, um, there's no way of operating them on like uh, Bitcoin, for instance, on non-smart contract enabled blockchains. But they do they do provide a, a, like an avenue of alt, of an alternative off-chain payment system. So here, this is in our taxonomy. These are commit chains. So they can be nocast, rollups, or plasma. So conceptually, what is a commit chain? Well, we have here a blockchain in block I, right? And let's assume we have a, here a commit chain operator. And there are several users that are taking part uh, in this operator. So what this operator does, he provides a constant size checkpoint to the blockchain. And when the off chain, when the users here perform off chain transactions, at some point in time, this operator submits a new checkpoint to the chain, and so on. And there's this, for example, some commit chain proposals specify a, a fixed interval at which this is done. Some might not fix it. So it, it's, the design space is quite large. So you can then have a fraud proof based scheme, right? Where a user will inspect whether a checkpoint is representing the user's proper balances. And if that's the case, then nothing happens. And if this balance that's being written on chain is not um, accurate and not, not, not well formed, then the user can perform a, a challenge or initiate a, um, initiate a, a complaint towards the the operator by by calling a special function in the smart contract. Or you could have a validity proof based scheme where the operator needs to perform some kind of a proof that what's written on chain is actually correct and um, does correspond what to what the the users have specified on uh, off chain. So what's interesting is we can, um, in a commit chain, what we can achieve, like the properties we can achieve is uh, eventual finality. So if the operator does not provide any collateral, the payment is eventually final if it's written on the blockchain and if it's not contested, if it's not challenged. So this is what's called eventual finality. Right. This is like, for example, it might be this time period. So it depends. Uh, I'm simplifying a bit sometimes. You might need to uh, to wait longer for it to be eventually final. Depends a bit on your protocol. What's good about this type of protocol that there's no collateral that's required by the operator, right? It's, a, it's quite a cheap operation. And uh, to provide here proof or, or, or commitment is rather cheap, typically. The disadvantage is that the recipients have to wait for the payment to be um, confirmed on chain, similar to in Bitcoin Ethereum, you have to wait a certain number of blocks for a transaction to confirm, and uh, this is obviously quite inconvenient. Uh, depends a bit on the on the use case. One other advantage of uh, commit chains is that they allow you to send uh, transactions off chain. So here you have a particular peer. He can actually sleep and being off chain, offline, while he's receiving a transfer from another peer. That's something which is not possible in payment channels. In payment channels, the recipient always have to be online in order to sign the receipt of a transaction. So here the behavior is similar to on-chain transactions, rather similar. Now, if the operator provides collateral, right, then he can kind of ensure this period, he can ensure all the transactions that are that are happening in this period up to the amount of the collateral. And for those transactions, it is possible to provide instant finality. So you can have kind of an insurance pool. The good thing is that this collateral is reusable each round, right? So here in this next round, it will be reusable and then next round it will be reusable, etc. So a transaction, if it goes only up to this particular amount, can be accepted instantly. Note, however, that this amount is like specified for each particular user. So you need to anticipate how much each user wants to receive in a particular round. And then you can, uh, you can update the state. It's similar to a payment channel hub with the advantage that you don't need to refill it each round. It's kind of automatically refilled each round. Um, yeah. So the collateral allocation 
for all users can be done in, in one hash only. Also, if you, want, if you encode this, for example, in a Merkle tree. One feature of commit chains is that you can join uh, without performing an on-chain transaction. So if you want to join this particular network, basically issue a transaction, I want to join, and then, then uh, you join this network. So this is instant uh, because it's off-chain, right? It's just a signature by the server and doesn't cost any gas. Well, you might say, wait, there's a centralized operator and you tell me we have to decentralize and we have to build a network of decentralized peers. Well, it's decentralized. It's a centralized operator, but it's untrusted and it's non-custodial. So if the users follow the protocol, the operator should not be able to steal coins, double spend coins or mint new coins. And let's say the operator is malicious and, for example, senses transactions because he can send a transaction, then users can migrate to a new hub. I have to agree that migrating to a new hub is quite cumbersome. It's similar to migrating to a new chain, which most users don't want to do. So this is, this is still somehow uh, uh, like a burden on the users when, when a, hub, a centralized hub operator would uh, misbehave. 